Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. I was gonna film this video on the road, but uh, I'm gonna be honest, I am exhausted. I have driven, I don't know, something like 40 hours this week or so on top of being a commercial videographer and photographer and still doing all the board game content you've seen. And so I was gonna pull over in Tennessee near Knoxville and film, but I found a incredible uh, Appalachian History Museum that I will travel back to sometime soon. For now, I figured I'd do this right when I got home in studio. So, welcome to the Quackalope Studios. So glad to be back here. We're preparing some exciting stuff for Christmas, so if you're paying attention to what's going on here, get excited for stuff coming down the road. And for now, let's talk about my, or let's unbox my camera backpack. Uh, I already, of course, am using some of the gear that's supposed to be in here. I have a Lumex GH5S in front of me with a Leica 8-18 on the front of it. And then up top here, this top shot right there, that's going to be a Lumex GX, or a Panasonic GH5 or a Lumex GH5, not the 5S, with the standard, I believe it's a 12-35mm, to 35 millimeter, uh, that is always my top angle. Those cameras should be inside this bag. Other than that... Everything that I've been using on the road, filming at location, is contained, for the most part, right here. But, let's start here with the, uh, with the backpack. I have a cell phone, apparently, that is dinging. I will tell that to be quiet. And I have a hat that, uh, Miss Alexander Radcliffe, uh, made for me while I was up there at Board Game Co.'s house, so I will keep that set off to the side. That is very important. Not the point of this video. Let's dive into this. So this is going to be a ProTactic 450 uh, Active Zone uh, backpack. This is a Low Pro backpack, I believe. Yep, the logo is right down there. And why do I use this? I've had this backpack for about two years, and I have to say, other than variations on this, I am not interested in any other camera backpack. Not only does it have incredible storage for my laptop if I needed it, but then also all the gear that I'm using. I actually keep my laptop in another bag that I carry with a lot of the dongles and gear because I just don't like packing this too full if I'm going to be carrying it around on a trail. It has access to a variety of locations from big side pockets to get your cameras, little storage pockets on the top and bottom, and a full back panel that opens up here on the back. And it of course has a waist belt and a chest strap. These are going to be really important units. You just get that weight off of your shoulders, around your hips, and across your chest. It's something that you do when you're hiking a lot. And when I was looking for a camera backpack because I was walking so much with my gear, I'm going to be out on trails with this. I was looking for something that provided that same exact option. And so this one did. This is a low pro backpack. This is the Active Zone 450. I cannot speak highly enough for this backpack. And of course, this video isn't sponsored by any camera company. I just wanted to share with you the gear that I'm using. And I have one very important question. We're currently preparing here on Quackalope. Around April next year, I will be hitting the road full time. Now, depending on the state of the world, of course, the amount of contact I have with other creators and stuff will vary. But my aim is to travel for about eight months or more, crossing all 50 states, collaborating, meeting up with, and producing videos in so many different locations with so many different content creators and meeting so many different fans. Of course, once again, because people keep commenting, it's always going to depend on the state of the world and what is a degree of risk that's, you know, safe for, for all those involved. But I would love your feedback. I'd love to have your insight into what I might be overlooking in my travel gear. I have a list that I'll read off at the end of this video about some of the items that I discovered while on this road trip that I would really like to include the next time I hit the road. So, with that being said, let's open this up and keep in mind what you use as cameramen or videographers and let me know what might kind of change the game for me. I'm just gonna open up this main pocket here so I can show everything off. Like I said, we've got side pockets and panels that allow us to access these two side compartments and then this big back middle compartment. So like always, you're always gonna have a duck inside of your backpack. Doesn't matter what size, there, you always have to make room for that. Uh, I have my AirPods, which I tossed in here. Uh, let's start with the cameras, because like I said, two of these cameras are actually not included. I have two GH5s and one GH5S. Now the GH5s are gonna be incredible for uh, slow motion, for handhold, uh, handheld videography. They have an internalized sensor that, it, that has a stabilizer on it. 
And so I can do all the pans, all the movement you see on location of B-roll, uh, board game boxes, all of that's just by hand on these cameras. I've used these cameras for probably four or five years now, and I have not found a replacement that competes with them. The reason I have the GH5S is because while that sensor is not stabilized, it does do better in low light. And so I'm super happy with this combination. This is always my front camera. These are going to always be my B-roll, secondary cams, and just my run and gun video cameras. Uh, they're a little bit heavy, they're a little bit big, especially with the Rokinon 35 on here, but they really, really do work very well. So the lens on here is gonna be the Rokinon 35. This is gonna be a cine lens, meaning that the aperture is entirely declicked. What that means is as I open and close that aperture, you might be able to see uh, that the blades in there, the iris of the lens, are fully smooth. You control how they uh, open and close, whereas in a photography camera, that would actually be controlled by your aperture. You'd click and it'd go Well, for video, that doesn't work as well. And so uh, this Rokinon 35, I actually own two of these lenses and these are my go-to lenses for almost everything I do. I love the 8 to 18 that I have here, the Leica. I like the Panasonic uh, 12 to 35, but I gotta say, if I was only going to exist with one lens, this one is my go-to. It's just long enough to be beautiful for uh, background blur. It does great on these four-thirds sensors, and it is so pretty when you're doing B-roll and just aesthetic shots. It also gets surprisingly close. You can almost get macro with it. It's not quite a one-to-one, -one, but I'd say it's probably a 0.7 to one or somewhere around there. Uh, incredible, incredible cameras, and they've held up really well. Like I've said, I've had these for probably four years now, maybe three years, and the only damage that I have is my doorway is starting to open up there a little bit, and I think it's potentially because of how my grip has changed when using this small rig. So I have a small rig cage on the outside of this along with a tripod mount here on the bottom. Now, what the small rig cage does is it allows me to mount various different items uh, to my camera to give me more control. For instance, I can screw in this handle here and make this so it floats. Just a little bit nicer to do like ground sweeping shots or get some smooth B-roll. Gives you another place to grip and control. So I also have this small rig handle built in there. These are the only two small rig items I have. I would like to get more as I build out my camera cage or my videographer's cage, uh, but I haven't really taken the time to look into what would be beneficial. So if you have insight into what would be a good cage build for a travel videographer, let me know, I'd appreciate that as well. Now, let's keep diving in here, and I have a brand new addition that I'm actually really thrilled about. This is gonna be the new audio that I use for everything. I have the uh, Lumex, or the Panasonic, adapter that goes right on top here. Slots in just like this. Actually, it's the other way, technically. Slots in just like this, and this will be an audio feed with two XLR ports, a full control panel here on the side, a rig for the mic, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment, and it just goes directly into the camera. I cannot speak highly enough of how effective this system has been, especially when paired up with my Rode microphone. So this is a Rode NTG2. Uh, I've got my SoundCloud, but this is gonna be a shotgun microphone, and I have used this for nearly everything since the moment I purchased it. I am looking to upgrade uh, my microphone at some point, um, I know there are better versions or better ones that I could get, but this little rigged system here and then a short XLR cable, which hooks into the side here and hooks into the side here. This system has been a lifesaver. Not only does it compress the amount of memory cards I need, it makes it so I know my audio is gonna be directional and incredibly clean. I don't have to worry about lavaliers out in public or you know at public parks when I'm filming and it's one self-contained system. So when I'm filming, you'll see me hooked up just like this and the memory card that comes out of my camera, that's the only thing I need to process, edit, and get all my footage together. So I have my bag that I carry that Rode mic in. It's a little bit longer than this backpack. I gotta admit, if there was one thing that I was uncomfortable with so far, it's how my shotgun fits into here, um, but I'm still figuring out the organization and I've been on the road for about two weeks, so the chaos here is all natural. I also have a Rode NT-USB. This is going to be a uh, condenser microphone that we use for the podcast. The, everyone that works on the podcast has one of these, uh, and because I was on the road for about two weeks, I had to have uh, 
I had to have this with me to record. I have the mount and everything out in the car, but just for security, I was leaving the, uh, the microphone in here. I really like these. They're not the best condenser mics, but they are accessible. They plug right into the computer. Uh, and the quality of sound you get is actually really high. And so I've been super satisfied with, uh, with this microphone, as long as you're in a good environment or at least an okay environment for it. I have another Rokinon in here, a Rokinon 85. I actually didn't use this a single time on the road. I brought it in case I needed some distant shots. Uh, with the four thirds, this is gonna maximize to like a 125 or a little bit farther. Um, and so good range on this, beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, Rokinon D-clicked uh, aperture, just like the other one, but um, it really, you know, I really didn't find that I needed it. Here you can see that D-clicked aperture even better there, just how it opens and closes. But either way, um, I love the Rokinon systems. It's just a matter of what lens is right for you when you're on the road. I don't do B-roll handheld with that one though. A little bit too wobbly. I have my power cable, direct plug-in for my cameras. Uh, this combined with batteries, is gonna give you all the power sources that you need in studio or at someone's house so I don't have to worry about swapping batteries out. These are gonna come in handy. Um, they just plug and play directly into the bottom of your GH4. I believe you can get them from almost any type of camera. Uh, for me, I have two of those with me just in case I was filming in studio like I was with Alex. I have two Zoom H1s with little Rode mics attached to them. These, I, ha I don't use these too often but if I do need to stick a lavalier on someone, like they're gonna be farther away than this shotgun mic can reasonably pick up, or we're driving in the road, if we do the road trip podcast every now and then with Jan for the Patreon, these are what are going to come out. Uh, they're super handy, simple audio recorders that just get a clean sound. Um, they're never my go-to, but they're always a really good backup to have just in case. What else do we have in here? Memory card, Pelican case, memory card. Uh, card holder, I flip them upside down when they're currently being used, when they're ready to go. Uh, I have them the other way. Some of those micro cards for the H1s, and then just some big old 128 and 256 cards. Uh, they just they just work really well. And if a card starts acting up on me, I cycle it out, I get rid of it, I buy some new ones. And then finally, I think our last stuff here is just going to be charges on chargers. Yeah, so a... A uh, fairly cheap little battery pack, another wall plug. Um, these just pop in here, not too complicated. And really, I mean, that's about my current setup for on the road. Now, the other thing that I haven't mentioned, that I haven't showed off is on the front of this, I can actually carry a tripod. So let me show you the tripods that I normally bring with me when I'm working on location. Uh, and I always usually have one of these strapped to the back of the backpack. And then depending on what I need, I'll be carrying one or two along with me as well. My main goal is just to get everything out of my hands though, as much as I'm able to. So I have three different, oh, versions of tripods. I have my monopod, and then I have two Manfrotto tripods, same bodies, different heads. So let's talk through these first. So we'll start here with the Manfrotto uh, uh, 190 Go. These have been my grab-and-go tripods, my studio tripods, my everything for a while. These are going to be the aluminum ones. They do have carbon fiber options. They're just a little bit more expensive, and I don't find the weight from me really makes a difference. And then I have two different types of heads on the top of these. I have a Manfrotto fluid head, uh, which just, uh, you know, you loosen that up, get a lot of range, and it works with the quick-release plate. And most importantly, all my tripod heads, everything, the quick release plates are the same on all of them. I was getting so frustrated with having to switch plates between tripod to tripod to different system and rig. I hate it. And so if I'm ever upgrading or changing the systems that I use, I'm either keeping the same heads with the same plate or I'm buying an entirely different set. I cannot do these mixed heads and mixed systems anymore. Uh, I also have this geared tripod head, which uh, for me is really important because this is going to be I mean, you usually use this for like architecture photography, but what it does is each system is geared just enough to allow you to twist on every axis and angle. And for video, that's not good if you need to move and get B-roll and, and adjust your shot. But if you're just locking off, especially in a rocky patch of grass or outside, this lets me make sure that wide shot right there is always perfectly angled to get a beautiful background shot and make sure it doesn't look like I'm falling down a hill. And then finally, I have the uh, Manfrotto monopod. 
with the uh, three bit feet down here on the bottom. These are gonna be nice because they just pop out, they give you some stability, and they allow you to uh, get either some nice uh, shifting shots like this, or you can lock that down and it should just stay there. Now I don't entirely trust it to stay there with the GH5s locked on top, but the option is nice to have. And on top of this, I just have a simple fluid head, same as the other one. Uh, I do like these fluid heads quite a bit. They're not as smooth as, you know, they're not as smooth as some of the more expensive fluid heads that you can get, but for me, they work for everything that I need to do. Uh, and this is gonna be the carbon fiber body with the four click or the five levels of height. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's gonna be my current travel setup at the moment when it comes to my camera bag. Now let's talk about the things that I know I wanna upgrade, and then I'd love to hear your feedback or your suggestions on what could make my life a little bit easier. Uh, on my list here of things I should look into and things I'd like to upgrade. Oh, and last thing, this. I need to solve this. This is actually here on my list. Uh, I need a better, I need a better uh, lavalier system, and I really, really have loved the Rode Lynx, but I've had them for probably two years, and the wire here has degraded enough from being carried around, just being travel, that this microphone, now the body, the system, all of that's perfectly fine, but this microphone here with the geared little plug, this is no longer good quality. This ducks in and out, and it's due to the wiring system, which sucks, because I still have these, and these are great. I just don't know what to replace this with. So, and I haven't seen that Rode sells backups or secondaries of these. Maybe I just haven't looked hard enough. Um, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But so far, this system seems to be fairly self-contained, and I haven't found a good option to just get new versions of these labs, other than the plug-and-play ones. I don't really want to substitute this for that. So, uh, lavalier microphone. I like these. I really do. I'm kind of looking for an alternative or looking to supplement and, and adapt these so that they're no longer broken, right? They're really nice to have on hand. They haven't ever failed me, except when that wire was starting to break down. Things that I would like to have. I would like to have a set of ND filters, neutral density filters, preferably ones that are variable in terms of darkness. The reason being, uh, when you're filming on a bright sunny day, I don't want to have to compress my aperture or, or dial, even dial my shutter speed up a little bit. Uh, I want to be able to get creamy, clear backgrounds, me in focus, everything else blurred out, especially because that's difficult on these micro four thirds cards or sensors. And so a good set of ND filters is something that's on my list. I never really use it in studio, but out on the road, especially when we get out to like the Midwest, that's going to become really important. So I need to become an expert on them before I hit the road. Uh, I'd like a photography camera. Now I have my Canons, uh, but they don't quite work for video and photo, and I'd like something that crosses that line a little bit more. I've been looking at the upgraded full frame uh, Panasonic system. Right now it's a little bit out of my price range, but I would sometime on the trip next year like to upgrade my photography system so that it's friendly within the family. Uh, zoom lens. Yeah, I'd like to get a set of photography lenses, and one of those things would be a high quality zoom lens. Right now the farthest I go is gonna be that 85. I'd really like a you know, 150 to 200 or, or something like that. Um, reason being, just that range, being able to like zoom in on ducks and get nature photography and, and film however I want. Like I can see a situation where being able to compress that background, zoom in nice and close will become really valuable. Uh, a wool blanket. As I go to other people's houses, now this is gonna be more of a entire system set. I have everything written down. I use wool blankets for my tablecloth cloth covering. I like them, they weigh down, they've got a nice neutral tone, they've got a nice texture to them so you don't really see blemishes on your mat for the most part, you just gotta avoid a little bit of wool hair, which so far no one's really noticed. I would really like to be carrying these with me um, because not everyone has them and they allow me to stabilize and guarantee quality, especially in the space. A MiFi Verizon hotspot. Uh, my phone does a hotspot, it is not as quick as the MiFi hotspot. I'd like to have that for on the road next year because having a plug in your car combined with a MiFi hotspot means you have a moving studio. Is it gonna be lightning fast? No, but will it be a good solution? Absolutely. Uh, and the final two things, I need a phone adapter for my tripods. I borrowed one from someone, super simple, super cheap. I just need to order one so I can film with my iPhone when I just need something to go up on social media very quickly. And then finally, I'd like to get a little B-roll camera or a little pocket size, go on a nature hike, don't carry everything with you, 
but film the world around you type of camera. For me, I think that's going to become really important, especially as I do more and more stuff that requires me to hike and trek, and I don't want to get this whole rig out every single time. I mean, this is a great camera, a great system, but if I'm vlogging, if I'm telling stories, if I'm doing more personal stuff where the quality doesn't have to be to that degree, I'd still like a little 4K pocket size camera. I'm not sure which one I want to get yet. Probably in the Panasonic family, still, to be honest. I mean, I just really like their gear, um, but I'm still playing with that. I'm still determining. So, that's my, uh, that's my list. That's my camera bag. This is my hat. I am, uh, I'm thrilled to be doing this. I am absolutely exhausted. I have been, over the last two months, I have been home a total of nine days. Uh, outside of that, I have been, tra you know, traveling, visiting nature parks, seeing, seeing a little bit of the world, seeing a few friends, not very many, uh, and just practicing and preparing for next year. And so I'm going to sleep for an extended period of time before I clean any of this up. Thank you for being here, uh, and get excited for next year. Good stuff is happening. We'll see you next time. Thank you.